For this video, I'm going to be looking at five underrated manga series that I feel have incredible art. I'm going to try to look at lesser known manga, so I won't be talking about things like Berserk or Vagabond or anything like that, even though those are the classic picks for incredible art in manga. But if you haven't read those, obviously I would recommend those as well. The manga in this video aren't entirely unknown, but I do think they're overlooked a bit and aren't really known by the average anime or manga fan. So with that out of the way, let's get started. The first manga on this list is Ultra Heaven by Keiichi Koike. The manga takes place in a dystopian future where all types of drugs are legalized and widely used. The main character is a drug addict who is constantly trying to find new highs and new experiences through his drug use. One day he meets a strange dealer who gives him a new drug called Ultra Heaven that happens to be an hallucinogen that is many times stronger than anything he's ever tried before. This substance takes him on an insane drug trip that blurs the lines of reality and as the reader you never know what's reality or what's just in his head. The drug takes him on a trip that makes it impossible to tell dreams from reality and as the story plays out the main character slips in and out of these drug trips never really knowing the difference between what's real and what's a dream. The most notable thing about this manga is the art, in particular the depictions of these drug trips. The manga has an unbelievable psychedelic style. When the main character goes into these trips, the panels bend and warp, giving the manga even more of a mind-bending feel. The artist makes an incredible use of the panels of the manga and breaks out of the established norms of how manga is drawn with art that manages to transcend the medium. Unfortunately, the manga went on hiatus after the third volume and there haven't been any new updates in nearly 15 years so we may never get a conclusion or any continuation to the story but even so what we do have is still a must read because I guarantee that the art is like nothing you've ever seen before. Next I have Koko no Hito by Senichi Sakamoto. The manga is about a mountain climber named Buntaro Mori. He's a loner and a bit of an outcast, but discovers a passion for mountain climbing when he transfers to a new school. And on his first day, he's pressured by another student to attempt to climb the wall of the school building. Through this, he discovers his talent for climbing and feels the exhilaration of reaching the summit. And then after this, he's convinced by a teacher to join a school sport mountain climbing group. The manga will follow him through different stages of life and show his personal struggles with loneliness and depression and document his mountain climbing journey. The manga will see him working through these issues. Eventually he'll decide to commit his life to mountain climbing and you see him find his purpose in life through mountain climbing and taking on progressively greater, more difficult climbs, eventually culminating in him taking on the challenge of climbing the K2 mountains east face, which is said to be the most difficult mountain climb to accomplish in the world. This is one of my favorite manga. I really enjoy the story and the character progression and the way the main character deals with his loneliness and depression and is eventually able to overcome these things and find purpose in his life and find something that he has a passion for. And of course, since it's in this video, the art is something else that I'm a fan of. This manga's got some really beautiful, realistic depictions of nature. A lot of scenes where he's alone on the mountain with these really incredible views of the mountains and the stars, which really capture the feeling of solitude that he has when he's on these solo climbs in the mountains, but also captures a real beauty of nature. Another thing that's really interesting about his art is his depictions of the main character's psychological turmoils and he's able to depict these feelings through his art in a really unique, interesting way. It's really impressive the way he's able to visualize these feelings in a drawn form. So this is another one I really recommend reading. Next I have The Strange Tale of Panorama Island by Suehiro Maruo. This manga is an adaptation of the novel by Edogawa Ranpo by the legendary Eroguro artist. I could have potentially chose any of Maruo's notable works that feature his signature art style. He has a distinct, unique, gothic art style that makes his manga stand out from any other artist. You couldn't go wrong with his other manga like Shoujo Tsubaki, The Laughing Vampire, or Tomino's Hell, but I decided to go with Panorama Island. If I was going to pick another work that I would recommend, I would probably recommend The Laughing Vampire. 
I would also recommend that manga, but I ended up going with Panorama Island because I consider it one of his better works due to it having a better and more engaging story. Maru's art is incredible and is really the main draw for reading his manga, with the plot and story being a weakness or in some cases a major weakness. But with this manga having the plot being the plot of a classic novel, the story holds together as a cohesive plot much better than in some of his other works. The story is about a failed novelist who is planning to commit suicide after the release of his latest novel when he hears that his childhood friend has passed away. He became acquainted with his friend at a young age when they noticed that they have a very similar appearance and were even able to switch places without people knowing. This friend is an heir of a large fortune and the main character gets the idea to impersonate his friend once again, this time by digging up the corpse and switching places with him. He then takes the place of the man and pretends that he was mistakenly pronounced dead and buried alive when he woke up and regained consciousness and dug himself out of the grave. He then takes his place at the head of the company and now has the man's fantastic amount of wealth at his fingertips. He then uses this well to create an island that is a type of Garden of Eden paradise where he can use to satisfy his desires. This manga's art deviates from Maruo's signature style of having a lot of gore and gruesome imagery, but in my opinion it shows some of his best work as an artist. It still keeps a lot of his dark gothic styles, but also showcases his skill as an artist. There's a lot of incredible landscapes and intricate architecture in the drawings. His composition and use of paneling is at its all-time best. For example, in this part where he draws a sprawling compound of the rich man's estate and he slightly tilts each panel in alternating directions to add to the sense of confusion and urgency that's going on in the story. The art here is particularly strong and the art is more detailed and intricate than it typically is without losing Maruo's signature style so this remains one of his must read manga. And next on the list I have Gone by Masashi Tanaka. So I knew about this character way before I knew about the manga. A lot of people will recognize the character of Gon as the little dinosaur from Tekken 3. I always thought he was an extremely odd choice for a fighter in Tekken 3, and little did I know that he wasn't an original character for the game, but he was actually the main character of his own manga. The plot of the manga is really simple. It follows the adventures of Gon, who is a tiny little dinosaur who somehow survived the extinction of the dinosaurs and is now the only dinosaur remaining in a changing world. There is no dialogue in the entire manga. The entire story is just told solely through the artwork. The manga is full of artwork of incredible, beautiful depictions of nature. Each chapter takes place in a different type of environment or biome, and Gon comes in contact with different terrains, environments, and animals. The art is really beautiful and it's extremely detailed. It has a bit of playful charm that keeps it fun to read, and it's interesting to see a manga with no dialogue at all. The entire story is told solely through the actions of the creatures in the story, and the closest thing to dialogue that you get are the facial expressions of Gon and the other animals. Gon and some of the animals are drawn in a cute cartoony style. A lot of the other art, especially the nature scenes, are drawn in a more realistic way, and there's just a lot of beautiful depictions of nature in a lot of various different environments. My favorite chapter is where he goes into the underground and sees an entire world of the creatures and insects that live down in the underground. When I first read that, the art really blew me away and it was one of the most incredible pieces of art and manga that I've ever seen. So this one's really fun, it's an easy read with no dialogue, so I would definitely recommend everyone check this one out. And last on the list, I'm going to have Music of Marie by Usamaru Furua. This is a very bizarre and artistic manga, but really stands out in its originality. The story is about a boy named Kai who lives in a peaceful village who worship a mechanical goddess named Marie who flies above them in the sky, keeping watch over their town. As Kai grows older, he begins to hear music coming from Marie that no one else is able to hear. Over time, he becomes increasingly obsessed with Marie 
This will cause him to seek out contact with Marie, and through this, the truth about Marie and the society that they live in will be revealed. This is another manga that I strongly recommend. I feel like the story is pretty strong and explores some pretty interesting philosophical and religious ideas that give the story a bit of a deeper meaning and keep it worth reading. But the thing that makes it really stand out to me is the art. The art is incredibly imaginative and I've never seen anything quite like it. Everything has a kind of bizarre dreamlike feel to it. The city that they live in is quite beautiful, but all the structures have a bizarre feel to them. The structures bend and curve in strange ways and almost give me the type of feeling that I get from an old German expressionist film. There's a number of structures that appear outwardly organic but are mechanical in nature and have a very eerie yet somehow beautiful look to them. Some of these scenes, such as the interior of Marie, are some of the most incredible I've seen in any manga. They're incredibly detailed and incredibly unique drawings with a ton of gears and mechanical structures. The level of detail is very impressive, and the bizarre nature of the art really leaves an impression on you and makes it something that is entirely unforgettable. So that's going to do it for my list of five underrated, lesser known manga that I feel like have truly incredible art and are must reads for me. And I'm thinking about maybe making another list of another five manga that may be coming out pretty soon. So if you're interested in that, definitely subscribe to the channel and post down in the comments if you feel like there's a manga that you know of that doesn't get talked about enough that has really incredible art. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.